Have you seen Cruel Intentions? It's a 1999 romantic drama about a vicious pair of step-siblings who make a wager to deflower the new headmaster's daughter before the start of a term. The film begins with Sebastian driving his Jaguar convertible to his therapy session. His therapist tells him to let go of his sex-addicted past. He agrees, saying that was the old him, and gives her a compliment about her killer legs. Sebastian gives her an extra long hug, but notices a picture of the therapist's daughter, saying this is the type of girl he should go for. She replies that she's out of his league, and he leaves. The therapist then receives a call from her distraught daughter, bawling over a breakup, and how there are naked pictures of her on the internet. The therapist realizes that it was Sebastian who did this, and rages at him from a window. Sebastian jokes about it and asks a pretty girl next to him out to lunch. Next, we see Mrs. Codwell and her daughter Cecile thanking Catherine for agreeing to help Cecile when she starts school. Cecile asks about the boys, and Catherine says most of them are gentlemen, but there are a few bad apples. Mrs. Codwell agrees, saying like your stepbrother. Right at that moment, Sebastian arrives and makes a few rude comments, which prompts Mrs. Codwell to leave with her daughter. Catherine immediately takes a hit of coke, and the siblings banter about each other's parents. Sebastian complains about his sexual conquest boring him. Catherine reveals that she is only helping Cecile because one of her recent sexual conquests has fallen for Cecile, and she wants to ruin her. She asks Sebastian to help seduce her. He refuses, saying it's too easy, and shows her a real challenge. He hands her a magazine where there is an article about Annette Hargrove, the headmaster's virgin daughter from Kansas, who will be staying with his aunt while her parents sell their house. He thinks if he succeeds in screwing the headmaster's daughter before term starts, it will be a huge boost to his reputation. Catherine says, it's out of his league. They decide to make a wager saying that if she wins, she wants his car. But if he wins, she will sleep with him. He says no way, but she tells him he can put it anywhere. Sebastian agrees. Next, we see Aunt Helen and Annette riding horses. Sebastian welcomes them and asks Aunt Helen if she could make them some iced tea. He then guides Annette away. Sebastian comments on Annette's article, and she replies she doesn't expect him to understand her beliefs, and that she has heard about his reputation. He asks who says this. She says a friend, and he leaves. Next, we see Cecile having a cello lesson. Her tutor, Ronald, sits up very close behind her, while Catherine watches from behind. She then decides to interrupt the intimate lesson and introduces herself. Ronald then says the hour is up and he will see Cecile tomorrow. Meanwhile, Sebastian complains to his friend Blaine that someone in Kansas has been badmouthing him. Blaine suspects that it is Greg McConnell. Sebastian says that makes sense because he fingered Greg's girlfriend at homecoming last year. Blaine doubts that Greg cares because he is a closet homosexual. Blaine knows because Greg used to sneak into his dorm room drunk every month and they would go at it. Greg would freak out as soon as he climaxed, saying, I'm not a fag. Sebastian makes a deal with Blaine to set up a booty call with Greg at a specific time. Then we see Cecile complaining to Catherine about her lack of experience with boys, so Catherine teaches her how to kiss. Afterwards, she suggests that Cecile practice with Ronald, her cello tutor, and even offers to let them go to her place. Cecile pretends not to know what Catherine is talking about, but Catherine says it's obvious. Cecile admits that Ronald sends her love letters, which she hides under a dollhouse, and she likes him, but her mom would kill her if she found out. Catherine tells her to give her the love letters, so she can help her write a reply. 
Back at Aunt Helen's mansion, classical music suddenly blares out in her room. She investigates and finds Sebastian sitting by the pool. He tells her that he thought she would like it. He then hands her a school bag as a gift and asks if she would like to swim with him. She tells him to give her a minute to change. Annette gets ready and heads back down to the pool, where Sebastian is butt naked drying himself off. In the pool, Annette quotes the bad rumor she has heard about Sebastian, saying every woman who has been with him has regretted it. He says he regrets some of the things he has done, and adds that he admires her morals. She's everything he wants in a girlfriend. She mocks his compliments, and tells him he's not her type, and says the best he can hope for is her friendship. Later, Sebastian heads over to Blaine's place, where he walks in on him and Greg doing the business. Sebastian takes some pictures, and Greg begs him not to expose him. Sebastian blackmails him into putting a good word for him with Annette, which he does the next day while having a walk with Annette on the beach. He also finds out that it was Mrs. Codwell who badmouthed Sebastian. Sebastian informs his stepsister about this, and Catherine asks him to help speed up Cecile's sexual awakening because Ronald is being too slow. That evening, Sebastian uses the excuse of leaving his glasses at his aunt's place to ask Annette out for a date. Catherine sets up a meeting with Mrs. Caldwell and tells her about Cecile and Ronald's relationship. Mrs. Caldwell is shocked because Ronald is black. Catherine tells her about the letters in the dollhouse and asks her to be discreet about it. Mrs. Caldwell heads home and walks into the cello lesson with the love letters. She scolds Cecile, who rushes off to her room, and then kicks Ronald out. The siblings are waiting for Ronald on the ground floor. They take Ronald back to their apartment and show him the letters that Catherine helped Cecile write. Ronald is shocked, and the siblings encourage him to go after Cecile. After Ronald goes to write a letter, Sebastian asks Catherine if she is aware of the damage they will cause to this innocent girl. She says she hates it that guys like him can go around sleeping with anyone they want. She loves sex too, but must act like a lady because if she tries to be herself, guys leave her for girls like Cecile. They call Cecile and tell her that they have a letter from Ronald, but she will have to meet Sebastian at his place because her mom hates him. That night, Cecile heads over to Sebastian's place, where he gets her drunk on Long Island iced tea and takes pictures of her while she reads the letter. He then threatens to call her mother unless she lets him kiss her. Down there. At breakfast the next day, Aunt Helen asks Sebastian and Annette to help cover for her at a retirement home. Sebastian puts on a smile and agrees. At the retirement home, Sebastian manages to convince a senile old lady that they had a great time playing backgammon. On the way home, he pretends he had a great time, but Annette doesn't believe him, so he admits that he was trying to get in her good books. Annette says that he takes himself too seriously and that he should lighten up. She makes some funny faces and then holds his hand. Meanwhile, Catherine pays a visit to Cecile, who is in shock about what happened last night. Catherine tells Cecile that she is becoming a woman and that she should sleep with as many people as she can to learn so that she can make Ronald happy. She then suggests that she should think of Sebastian as a tutor and to let him instruct her, which she does. After sex, Sebastian writes in his journal, but Cecile bothers him, asking if he loves Annette. He gets up and goes for a shower. The next day, Sebastian spies on Annette while she is reading. Catherine comes over, grabs his binoculars, and makes fun of Annette. Sebastian tells her to shut up. She asks him if Annette is really getting to him. He admits that she is. He explains that he can't stand the holier-than-thou bullshit, but she made him laugh, and he is infatuated with her. Catherine asks if she can take her new car for a ride and he replies that the only thing she will be riding is him. Sebastian heads outside and kisses Annette, but she eventually pulls away, and they both apologize to each other. Sebastian then gets angry saying he isn't angry, asking if she honestly has no feelings for him. She admits she does, but she doesn't trust herself with him and leaves. 
Later that evening, Sebastian goes to Annette's room to tell her he is leaving because he can't stand her games anymore. She doesn't understand what he means. He explains she is hot and cold and that she is a hypocrite for saying she is waiting for love, but when there is love right in front of her, she turns away from him. He starts to leave, but she stops him and locks the door. They kiss and Annette lies down on the bed and unbuttons her pajamas. Sebastian starts breathing heavily, apologizes saying he can't, and leaves. The next morning, Catherine goes to Sebastian's room asking if it happened. He tells her that he didn't feel right about it. She calls him a chump, which makes him angrily get out of bed. Catherine informs him that if he is heading to her room to find her, he's too late because Annette left 30 minutes ago to stay at a friend's place. Sebastian rushes out in his car while calling Greg to find out where she has gone. Greg tells him that she is staying at a friend's parents' place. We then see Annette on an escalator with her bags. Sebastian is waiting for her at the top. She tells him she is impressed. He replies he is in love. They make passionate sexy talk. Afterwards, Sebastian kisses Annette and puts her in a taxi while Catherine spies on them from the balcony. The next day, Sebastian heads back to his apartment but then hears some sensual moaning coming from Catherine's bedroom. He enters the room and finds Ronald in a drawer under her bed. After Ronald leaves, Catherine tries to have sex with him. But Sebastian says some other time, which pisses her off. Catherine then heads up to Sebastian's room and catches him saying I love you to Annette. She says Sebastian doesn't love her anymore. He replies it's just a bet. She starts to kiss him but he pulls away. She then threatens to tell Annette's father Sebastian's relationship and Annette's relationship with him. He says that he was about to meet with Annette and tell her the truth. Catherine says people don't change overnight. Sebastian heads over to Annette's place. She welcomes him lovingly, but when they get to her bedroom, he says he has something to tell her. He says that it was all a lie and that he feels nothing for her. Annette doesn't believe him and asks him why he's doing this. He starts to get emotional and says she means nothing to him, that she was just a conquest. She says he is shaking and calls him a coward. He approaches her, but she screams at him not to touch her and to get out. Back at the sibling's apartment, he tells Catherine that it's over and suggests that they celebrate. She tells him that she is meeting someone. Sebastian asks if it is Ronald and pulls out a letter from him. He then explains that he expected her bullshit, so he arranged a meeting between Cecile and Ronald. Sebastian then asks what they should toast to. Catherine says her triumph. So Sebastian drinks to her triumph over Annette. Catherine laughs and says her triumph is over him because he was in love with Annette, but it amused her because he is ashamed of it. She then tells him that she doesn't sleep with losers. That night, Sebastian heads over to Annette's place and tells the lady who answers the door to give her a package and a letter. Annette opens Sebastian's letter where he apologizes and confesses that he prided himself on taking joy in others' misery. He tells her that being with her has been the only time he has been happy. And now it has backfired. He has hurt the only person he has ever loved. He tells her that the package is his most prized possession, his trophy of his conquest, his journal. He asks her if she can give him a chance and tells her there will be no more lies. The next morning, Catherine calls Ronald and lies about Sebastian, going crazy and hitting her. On his way over, Ronald sees Sebastian wandering around and confronts him about hitting Catherine. Sebastian tells him he has no idea what he's talking about. Ronald then asks if it's true he slept with Cecile. Before Sebastian can apologize, Ronald punches him and they start fighting. Annette, who happens to be nearby, sees them fighting and rushes over to stop them, but gets thrown into the road. A taxi hurtles towards her, but just at the last moment, Sebastian pushes her out of the way and gets run over. Annette leans over him and they express their love for each other. We then see the new headmaster speaking at Sebastian's funeral. In the bathroom, Catherine snorts some coke. Annette then comes out of one of the bathroom stalls. 
They introduce themselves, and Annette offers her condolences. Before she leaves, she suggests that Catherine turn to Jesus to help her through it. Catherine calls her a freak after she leaves. Back at the funeral, Catherine is giving a eulogy. Suddenly, a student rushes in and whispers in another student's ear, and row after row of students starts to get up and head outside. Catherine tries to continue, but as more and more exit the building, she shouts, Don't you people have any respect? and rushes outside herself. Once outside, she sees a crowd of students, all with their heads down reading some papers. Cecile approaches her and hands her a copy. She looks down to see that it is a copy of Sebastian's journal documenting her coke habit and all her evil deeds. The students look up in disgust as she starts to cry. The headmaster grabs her pendant where she keeps cocaine and opens it. Finally, we see Annette cruising in Sebastian's car. She puts on her sunglasses while smiling about the precious few memories they had together. See, now you've seen it, please like and subscribe. And remember kids, if your stepsister is a hot coked out bitch who just wants to use you, just say no.